All right, so let's take a look at youlearn.ai, an AI tutor made for you. Basically, you can study along with an AI tutor. I don't know how that really is much different than just using chat GPT and pasting things in, but let's see. You can get started for free, and once you do, you end up on a dashboardy thing like this. I'm just gonna put in a YouTube video that I was watching and I had a question about. So I can go here and I can paste in the YouTube video link and in just a moment or two, it's going to process that and allow me to sort of watch it next to it. Now, I don't know what's gonna to happen to the audio here um, while recording a video if I click play, but I'll try and explain it anyways. Actually here, cool, I'll just keep it on. I'll put the captions on. So at about minute two, this guy says something that I didn't quite understand. And you might not either, especially if you don't know what any of this means. It's a video about coding. And let me see if I can find it exactly. Okay, this is it. So he says, I'm gonna rename this file to, sorry, right here he says, I'm gonna rename this file. You'll see the, the end of it is .js because it's a JavaScript file. And he says, I'm gonna rename this from .js to .mjs so it behaves more like a module. Okay, and I didn't really know what that meant or like what the significance of that was. So let's ask the AI. Here at about minute two, he says that he's going to rename the eslint config file from being a .js file to .mjs file. So it behaves more like a module. What is the significance of that? Why does it matter? Give me some context and explain it. So I guess it's nice that I can just say that and have a video here. Maybe this video gives the LLM a little bit more context, but still I'm not quite sure how that's different than ChatGPT. Let's see what it says here. It signals that the file should be treated as an ES module. See, that's not very helpful. It sounds like an LLM response. Why does it matter? So you're saying a bunch of stuff that sounds like you know, definitions of words and documentation speak, but you really didn't answer the question. Why does he do it? Why does it matter? He wants to use the ES module syntax. They obviously, sometimes they need to import other configurations or plugins Yeah, see, that wasn't that helpful. But that, that's just the state of LLMs, I guess. What's this thing? Oh, learn. Oh, here we go. You can switch your model around. You can use search. You can say at stuff. Okay, interesting. That might be kind of helpful if you're trying to learn something and they can sort of give you a flow chart. Let's see if I can find a different example. Something like, um, well, actually here. Let's go with, um, I have an idea. Not that. Uh, we were going to go with next server. This is another coding thing, but let's see if we can learn something here. Same thing for the... Um, All right. So this guy's talking about server fundamental. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, I have a great idea. And I know you might not understand what any of this stuff is, but that's okay. Hopefully you can see whether or not the tool helps. See, this guy's already got a flow chart in here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right, let's just grab this video. This this is about data fetching. Okay. I 
I don't know how many of these uploads it's gonna let me do. I think you're on a free plan, you get like five or something. Here's some topics you can explore. What else do we have in the sidebar here? Extensions, just nonsense basically. Okay, at least we get this kind of like this overview thing, even though it's you can't really resize it, so that's kind of lame. Oh, there we go. Hmm. Okay, let's see what happens if we use one of these things we were looking at. Quiz, flashcards, timeline. I mean, I guess that's okay if you want to learn like that. Flowchart. Okay, so here we go. Let's see if we can do this. This video is about data fetching in Nuxt. Let's say I have a project that's a website that displays actors and movies. I have some information on the database. What I want to do is I want a page that shows a review of a single movie and gets information about that movie from the server. It displays it on the page and maybe it allows users to interact with the things with likes or comments. Write a flowchart about how I'm supposed to, the steps I'm supposed to take using these best practices in plain English that can later be turned into code. But first we need to understand what the steps at a high level are. See, because maybe if you're trying to do something complex but you want to like get the high level steps first so you can sort of visualize and map it out, let's see if that helps. And I mean, I could ask the same exact thing to Claude without giving him a video. So I'm not entirely sure how it's helpful. Watch, I bet he'll even make this exact same thing. Actually, this looks like a chat GPT mermaid diagram. Ah, no, okay, he's just writing it like that. He's actually searching the documentation, that's nice. Data fetching. Server goes there, it fetched movie, is the data successful? Yes, display it on the page. I mean, that's pretty obvious. You don't have to know anything about coding to come up with logic like this. Handle the interaction, handle the thing. Yeah, I don't know if this stuff is really that great yet. Um, make a quiz, maybe. And this just takes forever, so we're over it. And see, this is, honestly, this is more helpful, right? Because this is kind of what you would need to know and then you would replace these things with code or whatever it is that you're doing. Multiple choice, medium, quiz preferences. Uh, dude, I don't know, fuck, sorry. <laughs> Just generate the thing, right? What person who's learning something wants to choose like what type of quiz they have? It's, they should be smart enough to know what it is. How does the async data composable in Nux3 handle multiple fetch requests? See, okay, I can see why this is helpful because it is easy to watch videos and just kind of tune out. And I can't tell you how many times I've like watched a video and then been like, oh shit, I gotta go watch it all over again. So this could be kind of helpful. Uh, how does the async data composable in Nux3 handle multiple fetch requests with a single component? Dang, got it right. I didn't watch the video, I just, you know, sort of used my common sense. But the problem is like, is that the correct answer? Because I can't tell you how many times I've just sat there for hours destroying some of my software projects by letting the LLM code and not paying attention. So like, is that right or not? I don't know. Maybe if it's pulling the answers off of here instead of just coming up with them, that's cool. So if you can find like, uh, like a source of videos that you trust or you know what maybe the documentation would be good because what these LLMs get wrong a lot is documentation and there might be something that's relevant to you that's you know sort of similar let's go through here and let's go to data fetching 
and let's ask this to chat. Let's do a new one. And let's ask it to Claude. So you got to kind of like, when you're in value, okay, you see D, nice. See, he actually wants to go use the docs. Nice. But if this video is old, for example, like when is this? When was this video? Things, things change a lot, you know. This is a year old. There's a lot of things that are totally wrong um, after a year because things change. And these LLMs get that wrong a lot too. So I guess it's just about how much you trust the source content and the thing that you're working with. What I honestly kind of prefer is just to use something like Monica. Go away. Because it can sit here and you can chat with like the actual documentation. And I think you can chat with the videos too. Let's go over here and watch this on YouTube. From the server to the... And let's pull up Monica. And let's see, do we get a chat with video? Oh, no, it's creative video, okay. I'm not sure if this works. I'm not sure if it reads videos. Okay, so maybe is it because I didn't like refresh this? Where is history? They have too many buttons. Nobody knows. Oh, there we go. its answer but okay so this time it's right there the links right there no but it's just searching okay so it's not really interacting with videos fine what else can you do flashcards and that looks like it's about it you know so you can you can watch stuff and you can have it make diagrams and things for you, but I don't know. If this is something that you think is relevant to you, then, then hopefully it can help. Maybe some of the features. Like that has nothing to do with this video. <laughs> Awful. And like, if you're gonna have something write notes for you, you're not really gonna get that retention either. So I'm not super bullish on this, but I do see the potential, especially for some things. Hopefully this walkthrough demo review was helpful.